Pero yung mga big group, pati na rin yung ibang mga tao na pinagkin. As to the future, there can be uncertainties. Happy fun day. And uh, very interesting kasi medyo wala akong alam sa topic natin. So kailangan mo, I need more information. Okay. Uh, diba? Napakaganda. <laughs> Napakaganda. Uh, Dr. Tatan, magandang umaga. Welcome to Top Patan sa Aristocrat. Good morning. Good morning once again. Um, it's nice to be back sa Tapatan and I am always happy to be invited in, in your program. Yes, very well. Tell us about your views about efforts to impeach the Chief Justice and the Ombudsman. How does it sound to you? Um, basically, I have my personal opinion on, on the matter and as a Filipino and as, as a lawyer. Um, pero this is a good political exercise, although uh, sinasabi nga na this is, this is more political than it is legal. And the process itself is, is considered to be, to be political in nature and can only be resolved by political means. So, and this exercise is, is something that involves all the Filipinos. And especially right now, na na as sinasabi natin dito, na the judges, if ever, na pupunta siya sa Senado for purposes of the proceedings, the impeachment proceedings, the judges will be will be will be judged as well based on the comments, likes, or even the judgment of of the watchers of the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking of likes on Facebook, ano? Iba ito sa pagkat... Ibang labanan. Ibang labanan na naman ito. Oh. Oh, iba ang like. But, but the Facebook or the social media has has a venue to stir up opinion and even emotions of, of Filipinos right now. So, minsan kung titignan natin, it can influence and it has a big influence on on the populace. Okay. Yung pagsasampa ng reklamo against the Chief Justice, nakita natin noong panahon ni Pangulong Aquino. So if it was done during his time, it could be done today. But what makes it different is pati yung impeachment of the Ombudsman. How do you look at it? We have constitutional processes and the impeachment is part of the constitutional process that we have right now to check on the, on the ability of our, our, of our um, officials basing doon sa pinaka pinaka core ng ating public service where public office is a public trust and all the public officers should be should be accountably uh, should be held accountable for for the people and public interest is involved in this in this polit in this process itself and and dito Kasi may mga commissions tayo, halimbawa, or the, the only specific persons can be subject to impeachment. So, hindi lahat ng mga officials ng gobyerno pwede i-impeach. And these are only particular individuals. And kung, kung uh, ito mga prosesyo na to, this will ensure that, that proper checks and balance will be, will, be, will be conducted sa ating sistema. Okay, but you mentioned this is more of a political exercise. Yes. Why did you say so? Um, for for several occasions, even history would would attest to the to the impeachment process. Even our Supreme Court has a as a statement that that the impeachment process is is a constitutional process, which is neither. Which is ne neither criminal, not not also civil, but it is a sui generis for purposes of of this of this exercise. Na based sa constitutional co commission na nag nagawa ng ating saligang batas or 1987 Philippine Constitution. Kung titingnan natin yung yung records of the commission, maraming discussion doon na whether whether it is it is criminal in nature as to the nature of the offenses where a, an impeachable officer can be held uh, accountable for or 
ito ba ay mga criminal kasi kung titingnan mo doon yung iba parang like treason for example or graft and corruption these are criminal offenses or penal offenses but not all penal offenses may be subject of of impeachment yes okay <laughs> And and the process and the and the process and the decision later on would come from from our the members of the Senate who are who are not judges but they take an oath to fulfill their duties as a as an impeachment court. Uh -huh. We we saw it during the Corona yes, yes. trial. Yes. At least full full yon ng uh -huh. decision. Uh -huh. We also saw it, mm -hmm. uh, kay President Estrada. But there was, yes. Well, pero hindi natapos, hindi right? Uh -oh. Hindi natapos. Maraming naudlot na impeachment. Oo, oh, naudlot na impeachment. Uh -oh. Mga indulog na ginabuksan. Oo. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, nakikita nyo ba na dito sa pagkakaroon uh, ng impeachment complaints against the Chief Justice at uh, sa Ombudsman, mababawasan ang pagtitiwala ng mga mamamayan sa mga institusyon tulad ng hukuman at ng ombudsman. If, if we talk about trust or pagtitiwala on the sa Supreme Court and the ombudsman, yes it has it has an impact. It has an impact sa sa mga institusyon na ito kasi we look up to the Supreme Court or the courts of law in the Philippines as as a body or as an institution where we can achieve our justice our justice or our 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 um, our causes na maprotektahan and this is and in our in our country makikita natin ang Supreme Court ay isang institusyon na, na makapagbalance ng 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 demokrasya natin for several times you have proven in our history that the Supreme Court remain remain to be to be to be strong and steadfast kahit na nagkakagulo politically and if we talk about trust this has an impact to not only the rule of law but the institution that is primarily in charge with with the promotion of rule of law in this country and in the ombudsman so ombudsman kasi ang ombudsman is tasked to 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 look into the affairs of public officials with again going back to the concept of accountability and public trust in in the public positions that they are holding okay so be that as it may uh, coming from the academy mm -hmm. ano yung tinuturo ninyo sa mga estudyante niyo ngayon considering the fact that uh, nililitis na halos Mm. yung Chief Justice at yung Ombudsman na sabi nga eh, dapat eh, beyond reproach. Mm. Kung, kung pag-uusapan natin ay yung content ng, ng tinuturo natin sa mga estudyante and the processes that are involved in our system, we are, we are going back to the basics all the time and we are always teaching the students that that of the basics na ang saligang batas or the constitution is the supreme law of the land that it must be that it must be followed and if the constitution says that that there is a separation of power and there is a checks and balance within the, our systems then we have to comply and it is sometimes sad if if we see in our in our system especially we hear we hear officers and, and people, or who are also lawyers. Minsan na, narinig natin na parang, parang anong leksyon ang tinuturo natin sa mga estudyante ng batas, or what, what lessons can we even teach to the Filipinos who are not law students. Okay. But at the same time, siguro pwede natin ito, no? if this impeachment efforts would push through, ano yung pwede maging apekto sa Pilipino, sa, sa mamayan? Well, makita na natin how, how impeachment can affect the, the Filipino nation in the impeachment of the impeachment of um, Chief Justice Corona, Estrada, and and historically, kahit sa ibang sa ibang bansa, makita natin na it has a big impact to the to the community life or to the society, and not only to the society itself, but to the very institutions that that are built for our democracy in George.
Uh, Dr. Tatan, isn't this just a case of the pot calling the kettle black? Hindi pa rin naakusan mo to. Pero ang problema, baka sa pag-aakusan mo, eh, di na divert mo lang ang atensyon ng tao doon sa iyong sariling culpability. Yun, yun ang nakikita natin dito sa if we follow the statements, we follow the 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 interviews or statements. Well, ngayon naman kasi iba-ibang iba-ibang statements every every time na maririnig natin. And with the current actions, and klaro naman and naririnig naman natin that openly nagsasabi na na will file cases against you on this because of this. And totoo, there there are cases filed after that. And last time we mentioned na, na magkakaroon ng isang body that will will investigate, for example, the ombudsman or or other but other agencies. And nagkatoto, sabi mo kanina in the earlier part of this program, of, no October 4, there was a executive order number 43 na nagcreate. Hmm. So, paano kaya ito? Dahil sa it appears that what the president wants. The president gets, especially with what some people say as the rubber stamp House of Representatives. I don't want to believe that, but it appears mm -hmm. the tyranny of numbers always played an important role in the decisions and actions of the House of Representatives pursuant to the presidential desires. Well, this is this is politics at work. So, kung titingnan natin the the influences and the the, the manner of of doing all these things are are dependent on sa sa machinery and sa direction that this government is going. Although sometimes you can say that where are we really leading to, diba? Kasi kung titingnan natin, we have we have all the the branches. Of, I mean, the Congress can always support and the, the president. Uh -huh. So that explains that the power of the purse could be held by the two branches of government. Yeah. Which is which is prescribed even by the constitution. Because kaya nga pinigay doon sa legislature, if we talk about power of the purse, um, the, the legislature is, is in charge of that and it's supposed to be and it's believed to be independent dapat. Pero what appears now, well, the, the facts can speak for itself. Okay. Napakaganda nito. Anong tingin nyo ngayon? Doon sa Executive Order Number 43, uh, I have a copy of uh, the Executive Order. Uh, it's entitled, uh, Creating the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission and Providing for its Powers, Duties, and Functions and for Other Purposes. Don't you think this is almost parallel to the job of the Ombudsman? Actually, pa, parang repetitious lang siya eh. Parang nagagawa na din naman to ng ombudsman natin. And if titingnan natin yung history also, at the time, there was a time na sa, sa time ni President Aquino, there was a, a similar similar commission created but it was, it was defunct already. And nalipat because uh, according to that, uh, According to that move, ito nga ay parang duplicitous na sa, sa ibang functions ng government. And this one, kung titignan mo, this is uh, this the duty here that is the juris ang jurisdiction ng, ng, ng body or the commission that, that was created under Executive Order Number 43. Parang nagagawa na ito ng, ano eh, ng ombudsman. And the ombudsman is independent, constitutionally independent, separate separate and independent body that would investigate on the public officers. But if makita natin dyan, and although we can say that the office of the president can 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 investigate and discipline all its officers under the executive department, however, may isang portion dyan sa executive, number four, executive order number 43 that can, can even investigate presidential appointees not within the executive department. I think um, which they are. Eto na yun. Sa jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. Sige, sige. Sa jurisdiction. Napaganda kasi dahil yung plenary powers ng pangulo as head of government authorize him to conduct lifestyle checks and fact finding inquiries for all public officials and employees, including those outside the executive department. Yes. Um, 
Section 5, number C. Sa executive, uh, sa, sa EO number 43, section 5, letter C, it says, Upon instructions of the President or motu proprio, the Commission may also conduct lifestyle checks and fact-finding inquiries on acts or omissions of all presidential appointees, including those outside the executive branch of the government, which may be violative of the Constitution or contrary to law, rules and regulations, and or constitute serious misconduct, and amount to betrayal of public trust. And on the basis of such, the Commission shall submit a report and recommend recommended courses of action to the President. So, this is problem. Sabi nung ilang mga kasama ko sa media, this will practically begin the witch hunting. Magkakaroon ng witch hunt doon sa mga taong hindi sumasangayon sa gusto ng Pangulo. Hindi po ba? Hindi ko makalaban. And we have heard also the President talking about conspiracy to oust him or to conspiracy against the existing government. So, maraming statements na ganyan. If not from the President, there are people who are who are ardent supporters of the President saying that there is currently a group or group of people who are working to oust the government. In fact, in, in some forum or in some fora, there are, there are statements on, on that. Uh, yes, but I will hold on to the statement of the Secretary of National Defense and the Armed Forces that there is no such threat to overthrow the President. So, given such a situation as a lawyer that you are, kanino ka aasa? Kung sa sinasabi ng Presidente ng kanyang mga kabal, uh, associates, uh, pardon the uh, uh, associates. Associates na uh, lang. Not, not kabal. Uh, or sa security establishment. Um, Una, we have we have to respect we have to respect the, the current institutions that, that we have, and as as a lawyer, um, siguro if there is a body in charge with, for example, national security, example national security as you mentioned, then that body should be respected. Kung ito yung statements niya, but but sometimes. We, in in other instances, diba? we are very careful also in in the in the news that we we receive. Yes, yeah, we have yeah. fake news. Because like kanina na sabi na that major parallel show with the office of the Ombudsman. Pano? How about if they have different results? Kino yung mas papaniwalaan? Yung under the president mismo yung office nito. Ano yung rule? Yun, yun yung ano yung yung problem that that is where the problem lies. Kasi ang lalabas dalawang body sa mag-investigate, for example, on a particular particular person or item. And and it is sometimes a waste of, of resources of the government. At the same time, if we have this constitutional body allowed to investigate on the on the affairs of public officials, including fact finding, including a recommendation for for possible filing of cases, then siguro we have to we have to follow on that trail. And and as an independent body, the ombudsman has the authority to discipline its people. Okay. And decided na din naman by there was a decision already mentioned that that the ombudsman cannot be investigated investigated by the office of the president. But the problem is, uh, several, uh, two points. Will this ever get implemented? Number one. Number two, will somebody go to the Supreme Court and file a case questioning the constitutionality of this executive order? And number three, how will the Supreme Court decide, considering the fact that the Chief Justice is being put on trial by way of impeachment, mm -hmm. And some people would describe it as character assassination. Um, so, so first, ano nga yung second question mo kanina? Um, Will this get implemented? No. Uh, uh, yes, yes, the second yes. question is, Will somebody go to the Supreme Court yes. to ask for its constitutionality, whether is this one is constitutional or against as, as to the implementation, I, I would suppose that this this is the executive order number 43 and signed by the president and released already. So probably this can be implemented. But in 15 days after publication, publication. of the official gazette. And yes. And there can be questions 
probably on the constitutionality or constitutional infirmities of the particular executive order, and that we we may expect that there may be questions on this before the Supreme Court. And as to the capacity of the Supreme Court to rule on this, Siguro, and it is within the power of the Supreme Court to rule on the constitutionality of the executive orders or even or even laws in the Philippines and to rule whether it is constitutional or not. So um, there will be a decision on that when a case will be filed. But as to the question of what will its effect be to the to the to the Supreme Court itself, who will be which will be deciding on the particular matter, considering that there is an impeachment against the Chief Justice. So maybe um, in this instance, we can treat the, the impeachment case of the Chief Justice as a different proceeding, whereas this one, this is purely a judicial proceeding where the magistrates of the Supreme Court are capable of deciding. And we have to, we have to, to, to maintain or remain in that remain in that situation that our our Supreme Court can and still decides the cases before it. Okay, that being the case, don't you think the College of Law students should be, uh, oh, we'd like to uh, acknowledge Attorney Matula of the Federation of Free Workers. He'll be joining us, yes, please. Okay, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Okay, Please take your seat. Let's have a coffee and a sandwich. As I was about to ask you, what do you think is the issue of this? The college of law students like from San Sebastian, from MLPU, can engage in friendly debates and discuss executive order number 43. And yes, and that is expected of of students in law to, to look into or, or, or debate or look into the different angles of, of arguments on the particular issues or legal issues in, in, the, in the country right now. And that is something that we wanted to develop among our law students to, to, to make a proper or appropriate uh, opinions on certain, certain issues being uh, raised. Yes. Uh, Attorney Sani, yes, anong tingin mo rito sa impeachment na inilulun sa laban sa Chief Justice at sa Ombudsman, being a law professor that you are? Uh, bahagi lang yan ng, uh, it's a, a part of political process and part of the interesting time that we are now. <laughs> Is that term interesting in Chinese parlance because in the Chinese parlance, once uh, this, uh, the term interesting is mentioned, uh, it's more of a curse than a blessing. I'm going to burn. Right? Right, right. Uh, okay, cool. What's that? If that is the Chinese uh, parlance, then parlance, probably that's also inclining to that part. Okay, all right. Uh, we were talking about Executive Order Number 43. Ah. Have you read Executive Order Number 43? Yes, uh, it exactly. creates the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission. Yes, uh, almost all presidents have their own Anti-Corruption Commission. I remember when I was still with the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, I was there for one year, from 2001 to 2002. And that commission was created by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo when he issued uh, Executive Order Number 12. Executive Number 12 uh, was the revival of presidential anti grab uh, or the Presidential Commission against corruption. After Ramos Estrada had also a presidential commission. He called it National Anti-Corruption Commission when he issued uh, uh, Executive Order 268, if I remember it right. Uh -huh. The National Anti- So, uh, 
corruption. Being uh, familiar with all these uh, approaches of the various presidents, how would you compare this executive order with those uh, you mentioned? Would you say that this is more comprehensive to include uh, non-officials of the executive department? Uh, the last uh, other executive order orders were limited only to those presidential appointees in the executive, in the executive department. And uh, the present one is an improvement probably <laughs> with, uh, with the other. Uh, yeah. It's a reform. But the purpose of uh, Presidential Commission Against Corruption, they are merely as fact-finding body. Uh, and they have no adjudicatory power. Uh, so the, the purpose is merely to do investigation, prepare report, and uh, of course, uh, recommendation, uh, what action to be taken. Uh, there is the question, who will guard the guards? Because even policemen are accused of corruption. So who will police the police? Now you have the ombudsman. Is it proper for me to say that with this anti-corruption commission signed by the president, no, the executive order, we will be guaranteed that the ombudsman will have its guard? Uh, the, under the constitution, the proper way of doing it is uh, when you want to uh, when you want to discipline the ombudsman, which is a constitutional body, you go to the process of impeachment. And uh, the proper venue for that is the House of Representatives to initiate the impeachment proceeding. And if, you are, if the House of Representatives will uh, find uh, probable cause of uh, 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 substance. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, uh, culpable violation of the Constitution, then uh, the House of Representatives will endorse uh, the impeachment uh, uh, finding to the Senate for trial and, uh, and uh, judgment. Okay. Napakaganda uh, nun. All right. Without necessarily putting the cart before the horse. Uh, how would you look at the composition of the House of Representatives? I'd like to believe our representatives are the best in their districts. That's why they were elected. Okay? Uh, on that premise, how, how do you look at the composition of the House of Representatives? Do you think they are as independent as they represent the sentiments of the people? Or do they represent the sentiments of the party and the president. Well, there is there is such a thing as presumption of independence. So, I think they are presumed to be independent, um, with the, with the unless they prove otherwise. Well, yes, probably, <laughs> and and it is a it is a the, the the legislature or the committees within the the House of Representatives can are are independent uh, constitutionally should be should be independent. And and are as public officers, there is assumption of regularity in the performance of public functions. So as to the as to the independence of the individual um, individual members of the House of Representatives, well, um, this is a political exercise, and they they. But I have seen in the social media some some of the recommendations that. Why would you? Uh, why wouldn't you ask your your members of the House of Representatives why they voted in such a way? In in my case, um, there are I saw that in in the the committee there are that there are Ilonga congressmen who voted for the for the impeachment, and I I cannot further comment on their decision, but. Have you also considered the timing of their decision? Uh, it's October, and soon it will be November, and definitely there will be recess for the Christmas season, and they will need something for Christmas. I'm not implying that they're there for the mana, <laughs> but uh, don't you think the timing is of uh, importance as well? Well, as, as to timing, I, I, 
I think it is within their prerogative to to know whether this is the best time for them to impeach the the president or other or other impeachable officers. As to other underpinnings on these actions, um, we are not. We are. We, we cannot. We cannot just say. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Coming from uh, the Federation of Free Workers, I don't know how workers look at what's going on today. Being president of FFW. Yeah, a number of workers uh, are not concerned with these uh, political uh, uh, events that are confronting the nation. But uh, there are some workers also who are uh, interested to know what is really the facts of the case and what is the truth on this matter. The, the nation, the, this uh, impeachment uh, proceedings, this uh, talk about impeaching, uh, impeachment of the Chief Justice and the Ombudsman. Uh, they are also uh, thinking of what really is happening to our country. But as to this time, there is no collective opinion or judgment as with respect to these particular issues. Ibang workers affected rin ng trolls at ng mga fake news sa social media? Maraming workers nag-iimbog. Nababash kang gusin. Hindi, kaya kaya ko sinatanong. May employment component daw yan eh. Yun nga eh. But the point is, one should deal with social media at sa dami ng may telepono sa Pilipinas, I'd like to presume a great percentage of your members are into Facebook as well. Marami. Marami namang mga workers nag-advocacy ng issues of the workers sa Facebook. Alimbawa niyong campaign namin on security of tenure uh, against contractualization. So, dinidiscuss ng mga workers yan sa Facebook at may mga grupo-grupo pa sa Facebook na pinag-usapan yan. May mga group, mga workers din na nag-uusap tungkol dito sa impeachment. So, nasa Facebook din sila at nag-uusap tungkol dito. Pal pal palagay ko hindi ganun kadami. Hindi pa ganun karami. Oh, oh, oh. Dahil ang mahalaga yung sahod na oh, maripapatupad. Oo, sahod ng mga manggagawa. Uh, security yung, of tenure. Uh, kasiguruhan sa trabaho. So the topic itself, parang hindi pa nila hindi pa kasi, no. kinidiscuss. Oo, oh, kasabi nga nila, eh, dapat tutukan ito at uh, pabayaan ata dahil dito sa distraction na ito. Distraction na ito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd like to acknowledge uh, we have another bachelor with us today. Si Father bachelor Jerome. Forever. Oh, si Father Jerome Siciliano ng Public Affairs ng Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. Uh, coming from the Public Affairs of the CBCP, how do you look at these issues being peddled uh, in the legitimate and social media and other medium? Well, hindi lang naman siguro simbahan ang nakakapansin nito. Ano? Eh, nakita natin mukha yatang may personal na dahilan kung bakit ginagawa ito ng ating Pangulo at ng kanyang mga kaalyado. Ang tingin ko na lang dito sa impeachment na ito, ano, uh, do it the right way, right purpose, right reason, and of course, with the right process. Ano, right purpose, eh, baka naman tinatanggal mo yan dahil mukha yatang hindi mo makuha eh. Uh, baka naman gusto mong tanggalin yan, alisin yan dahil uh, baka itong taong to mukhang hindi yata namin ito kaalyado. Okay, right pur purpose yun. And then yung right reason, eh, inefficient ba? Corrupt ba? Meron bang, meron bang nagagawa itong mali? O kaya ginagawa mo itong impeachment na to kaya gusto mo siyang tanggalin. And then, of course, right process, eh, at this early, pinag-uusapan na dito na uh, yung pwede bang magtanong, pwede bang i-cross-examine, pwede bang ganito. So, sana nga hindi na dumating dun eh, yung sa right process na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. Doon na lang muna sa dalawa, i-consider muna nila yon Kung ito ba talaga ay nararapat, tama, at ang taong bayan, eh, nakikita naman siguro nila kung ano ang nararapat dito. Have you ever entertained the thoughts, uh, Father Jerome, that all this intend to, you know, deflect more pressing and legitimate issues so that more people will have topics to talk about? Def definitely, you know. Definitely, I think uh, that's one also the re that's one of the reasons also that kung bakit may ganitong proseso na ginagawa sila para mapag-usapan, eh kabi-kabila na rin naman ang kumaga issue na tumatama sa Pangulo. Uh, kinakailangan dito may offensive din eh. 
So if, for example, some of the critics of the president will continue to hit him, eh ngayon, lumabas sa SWS survey, eh, bumaba na yata, trust rating ng Pangulo. So this is a cause of for concern for him, ano? Eh, kinakailangan, hindi lang yung kalaban niya, ay may mga offensive strategies na ginagawa. Eh, dapat mismo ang Pangulo, meron din gawin dito to deflect ano yung nababago na ngayon na pananaw tungkol sa kanya. So, and so, therefore, kinakailangan gumawa niya ng issue laban sa mga institusyon, laban sa mga tao na nakikita niya na mukhang hindi nga niya kaalyado. So, naniniwala ko doon sa sinasabi mo. Sinasabi mo na maaari nga talaga ito, these are issues na ginagawa nila para mapag-usapan naman yung kalaban. O kalaban in a sense, ano, hindi mapag-usapan kung sino yung, yung bida. Anong impact nitong impeachment at nitong executive order uh, number 43 creating the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, anong impact nito sa mga kabataan? Hindi kaya mabawasan yung pagtitiwala nila sa mga institusyon dahil sabi ko nga kay Dean kanina, kay uh, Dr. Rodel, eh baka it's just a matter of the pot calling the kettle block? That's a very, ano, no, that's a very definitive impact na sinabi mo na yung, yung trust, hindi lang ng kabataan siguro, kundi ng tao mismo ay may erode. No? Because for one, uh, what, what the president and his uh, congressional minions are doing right now is to actually erode. No? <laughs> I-erode mo yung kumbaga, pagtitiwala ng tao dahil alam mo nagawang kasalanan nito. Ano, objectively speaking, eh, yung publiko, alam din naman nila eh, kung may nagagawa bang mali ito. Well, maybe the, 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 the chief justice is not perfect herself. Pero, <laughs> by comparison, ang dami naman yata ang tao sa gobyerno na baka mas masahol pa at malala eh. So, ang, ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag tinitira mo yung isang tao na sa perception naman ng publiko, eh hindi naman ganun kasama katulad ng iba, sigurado mawawala ng tiwala. Kasi yung tinitira sa kanya. Kaya nga, yung lifestyle. Eh, tingin ko naman, mas matitindi pa lifestyle ng ibang mga kaalyado niya. Uh -huh. Tingnan mismo natin ang pangulo, ano ba lifestyle niya, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, uh, paano, ka pang, paano ka pang magtitiwala sa, sa ganung uri ng proseso? Kaya, uh, while, while on my way here, ano, uh, a reporter asked me, what's my reaction about the dwindling number of the trust satisfaction rating of the president? Hindi kaya dilawa na may gawa nun, sorry? Hindi naman. <laughs> <laughs> madaling madaling gawing excuse ano pero mga idiots na lang maniniwala kung lahat na lang nangyayari dito sa lipunan ay dilawan ano palagay ko so ano yung thoughts niyo ron sa bumababang paniniwala frustrating well we, we are talking about the person who continues to lie we are talking about the person who supports a fake news so what do you expect from the people so if a person is lying if a person is peddling fake news what do you what do you expect from the people do you still believe that person So, trust satisfaction rating ang pinag-uusapan at ang, ang, ang subject dito, yung presidente. So, what do you expect? Of course, if a person is lying, do you still trust that person? Ang analogy niyan eh, ikaw, Sky, may asawa ka. O, kitang kita. Alimbawa nga. <laughs> Sabi nila, wish ko lang eh. Wish, wish ko lang. Ko lang. <laughs> okay. Alimbawa, kitang kita mo naman na nagsisinungaling ang asawa mo, maniniwala ka pa ba sa asawa mo? Kitang kita naman ng publiko na nagsisinungaling, maniniwala ka pa ba doon? So that, that, that's that's a that's a direct ano the direct effect na ginagawa ng pangulo. So we do not expect that the public will continue ano to support a president who lies, ano who supports fake news. Eh, sa babala yata ng logic doon ano, walang practicality doon. Pagkakasabi kasi he must have been kidding lang, like, katulad noon yung imbento lang niya yung account ni Trillanes, no? And he was just kidding. Yung pagkakasabi, eh naniwala naman ni Ika yon. Pati nga yung media na banatan din, naniwala raw doon sa sinabi niyang nakausap niya ang Diyos sa eroplano. O ikaw mga ugok yun, naniwala naman sa akin. So how do you look at that? Father. Kaya nga pinalalabas natin dito uh, na kapag naniniwala ka pa sa taong ganyan, ano, eh ang palagay ko, hindi na problema yung taong nagisinungaling eh. Yung mga naniniwala sa sinungaling may problema. You know, I attended once a, a forum at UP, you know, pro-democracy summit. And a lot of people were asked, sabi nila, so how do you react? So what's your reaction to what's happening now in our society? Alam mo, karamihan doon ng mga nasa forum, pro-democracy summit, you know, galit na galit sa Pangulo. 
when it was my turn to be asked, sabi ko, galit ako sa publiko. And then they asked me again, why? Sabi ko, publiko, tatang eh. Ang tatanga ng publiko dahil kitang-kita nilang nagsasinungaling, naniniwala pa sila. So, ang problema dito, ah, ang problema dito, yung mga naniniwala pa rin sa kasinungalingan. So, and, and I think, ano, I think, yung media, yung simbahan, yung iba pang institusyon, dapat may gawin dito para imulat yung, yung kamalayan ng publiko. Now, why are we going to believe somebody who is fooling us? We are being taken for a ride. So why why we should believe that guy? Uh-huh. Maganda itong topic na to. We'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media. Yung mga gustong magtanong, simulan na natin. We'd like to acknowledge a good friend, Engineer Bert Swansing, who's here for coffee. Okay? <laughs> Teka muna, may dumaang anino sa camera. No? Oh, may dumaang anino sa camera. Okay. Mariwanag. <laughs> hindi, hindi. Dumaang ka sa camera. Diretso eh. <laughs> Ah, sir. <laughs> Lumiwanag ba yung ano natin? Sir, ganito. Pat Santos, Tribune. Anybody can react, no? Kasi kanina parang nabanggit na each, yung bawat president nag, nag-create ng mga anti-graft. Ang kaiba dito sa sitwasyon na to, parang nakasentro lang sa dalawa dahil may ginawa yung yung dalawang ahensya, yung, yung, isang, ay, yung isang Chief Justice against EJK, yung isa naman, AMLAC, AMLAC issue, inimbestigahan. Biglang naglabas ng yung, yung EO, EO na yun, yung controversial EO. Ngayon, ang pa sa tingin nyo, bakit? Yung pag, pagkaka-timing is bad. Ano sa tingin yung in bad taste ba yung ano, yung paglikha ng EO, yung timing, kung saan umiinit yung issue dahil pano, tumakbo na yung panahon, may 13,000 time victim ng ano, unexplained <laughs> killing lahat doon ng laban. So, could you react guys? Ano? Bad timing ba? Okay. Timing ba? Yung paglalabas ng EO? Yes, please. Ako, hindi lang bad timing. Ano? Bad taste din eh. Kasi unang-una, itong EO na to, ipapahid mo dyan yung presidente, eh, meron din namang issue ng corruption, eh, di ba? So y- you are going to, to, to make a person ahead of an agency that is tasked to curb corruption. And then, itong taong ito, meron din namang issue ng corruption. So hindi lang yung bad timing, talagang bad taste. So, and besides, uh, if, you, if you create this EO, you try to undermine the other institutions that are already in place ano, to, to, look, to look after these corrupt practices. Diba? So, parang ano-ano to, pinaglalaroan na naman tayo nito. A- anong purpose niyan? Para palabasin na naman yung Pangulo, malinis. Diba? So, kalukuhan eh. <laughs> Para sa akin, ano? Okay. Attorney Sunny, if it will not endanger your well-being? <laughs> Okay, okay. Sa, 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 sa practice ng law, may mga kasama kaming mga kompanyero na nagsasabi na the best defense is offense. <laughs> so, sa politika naman, eh, palagay ko ay eh, ginagamit niya ng ating presidente. No? Kasi eh, may mga isyo na itinataas. Sinasabi niya siguro, Kung binabato niyo ako sa corruption, eh may corruption din kayo. <laughs> Di ba? Pareho lang tayo. <laughs> so it's just the pot calling the kettle black. Parang, uh, parang pwedeng masabi ng ganyan. Pero kung uh, titingnan naman natin na uh, walang pinapanigan sa batas, ang presidente naman talaga bilang uh, having the control over all executive uh, departments sa Section 17 na uh, Article 7, at sabi pa doon sa batas na the duty to ensure that all laws are being observed. Yung ginagawa niya ay pwede ma-justify naman sa ganoon. It's pwede. legal. It, cannot be, it can be justified. Oh, it can to be. enforce the law or to ensure that all citizens are observing the law. 
Okay. Uh, let me put another kolatilya to the issue. What if this is questioned before the Supreme Court as far as constitutionality is concerned? I, I think this uh, executive order will uh, survive the test of constitutionality. Really? Yes. Despite the fact that it will uh, encroach on other appointees other than those within the executive department? If I'm the justice of the Supreme Court, which, every, who, which is the ambition of most of lawyers, I, I can, it can be justified under Section uh, 7, uh, under Article 7, Section 17. And the oath of office of the president to enforce all laws. So the duty that all are observing the law and to enforce the law the president has the duty to be informed mm -hmm. of what is up happening in our country, particularly those whom he appointed, including those in the constitutional body or mm -hmm. constitutional bodies. Okay. But that uh, investigation process does not mean that he can discipline them, those outside the executive department. It can be, it can be an input. Uh -huh. Uh, to to have uh, to have information and to initiate uh, recommendation later on of what is to be done. Okay. Yes. Would you care to add, uh, Dean? Ako naman, I I have an opinion. My opinion in, on this on this matter would be different from from the justice, future justice <laughs> here. Uh, yes. Justice Sunny in the joke lang. Um, um, ako, my opinion is, kasi kung, kung pupunta ito sa Supreme Court, for example, for to question the constitutionality, my, actually, comment ko lang, comment ko is, is it may be constitutionally infirm in certain aspects, particularly that, that it may be encroaching on other independent bodies. It may be, it may be that this, these bodies may, these bodies are outside the executive department, and hindi naman pwedeng um, lahat lahat papakialaman. Okay, nandon tayo sa sistema na nandon tayo sa sistema na the president has the power, overall control over the executive department. But but there are also institutions na kinerate. If we look at, for example, example yung yung tinitira ngayon, ombudsman, halimbawa lang ombudsman. Um, may may independence na tinatawag doon if we look into the, the law that creates that. And sabi nga sa isang news report, sabi ni Pimentel, ni, ni Senate, Pres Senate President, ang, ang aspeto na yun ay, ay, ay nasa kongreso sa pag-create pag on, on a particular law. So, ang comment ko is, is probably this can cannot pass the test of constitutionality, if ever there will be a, a, a question on that, particularly on the encroachment as to the independence of other institutions, and it is outside of its power to, to, to investigate other bodies outside of the executive department. Okay. Uh, uh, can we say, ang hinihintay kong sagot eh, parang ano ganito, simple lang eh. Hindi ba pambubuli ni Duterte yun sa mga institusyon na check and balance, nakatutok sa kanya o to sa mga tauhan niya. Hindi so, kaya. ibig mo sabihin, yung ginawa ni Pangulong Digong para patahimikin yung ombudsman at yung Supreme Court. Parang bully lang, parang ganun. Sa tingin para patahimikin, ganun. Hmm, parang ganun. Oh, yan, 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 yan. Maganda, maganda ito. Maganda ito. <laughs> Actually, pwedeng uh, mabasa na ganyan. Sa pwedeng uh, kasi ba ibang opinion ng mga tao, Pwedeng may basihan ang sinasabi na pambuboli lang itong, uh, itong ginagawa ng Pangulo. There is a reasonable, uh, tawag ito, there is a reasonable basis for such an opinion. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. But you're aware that the Supreme Court decides differently on almost parallel cases. I remember uh, Jose W. Jokno in his lecture before lawyers and judges in Albay, when Father Jerome was still seven years old, that was in 1981. Sinabi ni Jokno 
Now, you better watch out because the Supreme Court can decide differently on almost parallel cases considering the people's point of view, whether it is acceptable or not acceptable. So, yung mga nangyayari yan, uh, particularly yung may para mga political question uh, involved in uh, issues uh, uh, na related to political questions. Uh, balikan ko lang yung uh, constitutionality ng Executive Order Number 43. The power of the President to create an investigatory body like uh, uh, Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission. I think the President has the power. It has been decided in a number of decisions of the Supreme Court. The latest is the case of Pichai versus the uh, Deputy Executive Secretary for Legal Affairs. In that particular case, um, President uh, Aquino the third, abolished the Presidential Anti-Grab Commission um, by signing Executive Order Number 13. And uh, after, in that Executive Order Number 13, the President transferred the functions of the Office of the Presidential Anti-Grab Commission to the Office of the Deputy Executive Secretary for Legal Affairs, creating an office, a third office, because the Deputy Executive uh, Secretary for Legal Affairs had, have uh, the legal division and the legislative division. Adding to that is the investigatory and adjudicatory power, mm -hmm. uh, which was the function of the Pagsi then. Okay. And it was questioned by Pichai on ground that it was an encroachment of the power of the legislative department to create an office. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Supreme Court in that issue said that the president has a continuing power to restructure the office of the president under Executive Order 292, particularly Section 31 of that uh, administrative code. Okay. Uh, let's go nostalgic in the discussions. Uh, nung panahon ni Tracy Cabrera, meron pang tawag ng tanghalan. At uh, nanalo si Jumidis Maturan. May he rest in peace. Ang pagkakasabi ay, he may not have been a good singer, but he won because of timing. Yung sinasabi ni Father Jerome kanina, yung timing ng creation nitong commission was bad. So, it would not have created a stir had the president immediately signed this when he took office. Ano kaya? Uh, it's a learning process. <laughs> Lusot pa rin. Lusot pa rin. Okay. So, one year pa yung presidente. So, palagay ko, <laughs> nag-aaral pa. Kaya ngayon lang may nagbulong. Na, <laughs> nagbulong na, oy, malaki pala ang problema natin sa korupsyon. Okay, at kinakailangan okay. tutukan. So, it can be justified in that way. Yeah. Father? Uh, mag Magre-react lang ako doon. Ano? Well, Ba basically, basically, when the president started the presidency, you know, yun na kagad ang nasa utak niya eh. That he's going to run after corrupt people. Lagi niyang sinasabi yan. So, to, to say na gagawin mo lang yan ngayon dahil ngayon mo lang nakita, eh parang again, ano, it's, it's, it's actually a question of, parang ano ba to, nasan yung logic mo? From the very start, you've been trumpeting that you're going to, to crucify all these corrupt people in, in your government. At tapos ngayon, galit-galit ka sa corruption, tapos ngayon mo lang gagawin yan dahil tinitira ka na. So, kaya, kaya, sabi ko, kaya sabi ko nga, eh, bad timing, bad taste. Di ba? Okay, so, okay. Very well. Reaction? <laughs> Parang nanonood ng tennis si Dean. Eh. Al alam mo, itong uh, mga isyo na dapat aksyonan ng gobyerno ay maraming late. Eh. <laughs> maraming late. Alimbawa, itong... Uh, itong uh, Itong uh, isyo ng contractualization ng mga manggagawa. Sabi ni Duterte nung kampanya, I, within one week from my assumption to office, I will call the President of the Senate, the Senate, and the Speaker of the House 
2 in Akalo against contractualization. But until now, more than a year, wala pa rin. Delayed talaga. Wala pang bumubulong. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Father, eh. Eh, kung, kung, kung wala pa tayong batas na ginagawa, ano? and again, that is a question of the sincerity of the President. Huwag kang magsalita na magsalita kung hindi mo naman pala magagawa yan. You've been promising the people a lot of things and then all of a sudden, you're not doing anything. Ako, tingin ko dito, ano, kung meron man dito na accomplish ang presidente, magmula nung siya ay nangampanya, isa lang, pinatutuhanan niya yung pagpatay sa mga tao. Pero yung iba, contractualization, kung ano-ano pa man, wala eh. If there is one thing na talagang nagawa niya, pinatunayan niya, since he started, ano, campaigning, isa lang ang talagang napatunayan niya dito na ginawa niya. Papatayin ko mga durugis sa ginagawa niya ngayon. Others, wala. Okay. All right. More questions from the media? Oh, Tracy, yung itatanong mo. Sige na, tanong na. Kung baka abutin tayo ng tanghalian dito. Sige. I was just wondering, di ba yung... Uh, during the times nung judges pa, di ba? Kay Father to. May mga inappoint si God na mga tagay kay Saul, kay David. Ay, mga... na, wag na muna yun. Diretsuhin na natin. <laughs> Kulang tayo sa oras eh. Hindi, ganito na lang. Uh, Sige, diretsuhin muna. Okay. Probably wala naman perfect leader. Eh. Okay. Walang perfect. Okay. But what I can see is, ito reaction from the gentleman. What I can see is, if a leader is not supported, nagkakaproblema talaga. Whether he's right or wrong. So, iyan na naging presidente. What's, what's the problem? But so, yeah, okay, okay. Very good. Thank you for the question. Bakit kayo mga taga CBCP kontra kayo well, sa presidente? Well, actually, oh, sige, sige. Diretsin mo, na, na, na natin. Uh, wala naman kaming inihinging perfect leader eh. <laughs> we, we, we are not actually, we are not actually looking for a perfect leader. Ang, ang, ang gusto lang naman natin dito, kung meron kang gagawin, gawin mo ng tama, susuportahan ka. Do you expect the do you, do you expect the church ano, to support somebody who advocates killing? Hindi mo naman siguro gagawin yan. Because if you're go if the church is going to support uh, this guy who supports killing, wala na yung mandato dito ng simbahan, mawawala ng credibility simbahan. Kung baga, the church preaches hope. And in fact, the church is, is the symbol of hope in the world that we live in. Eh ngayon, kung papatayin mo yung tao, tinanggal mo yung hope niyan eh. Wala nang hope dun. So it, it betrays, ano, it betrays the essence of being a church. Kaya you do not expect, you do not expect the institution to support somebody na in, hindi naman, hindi naman maayos ang ginagawa. Eh, kung alimbawa ang Pangulo natin, talagang tinuldukan niya contractualization, I think kahit si Archbishop Cruz, si pagpapamisa pa yan ng 9 days eh, o kaya 30 days. Hindi lang si Archbishop Cruz. Alimbawa, itinigil niya ang EEJK. At talagang i-prosecute niya kung sino man talagang gumawa nito. Kahit si Socrates Villegas siguro, baka one year, ipagpamisa pa siya. Pero uh, hindi natin nakikita yon. Meaning to say, gawin mo yun ng tama, gawin mo yung naayon sa batas, baka lahat ng institusyon tulungan ka. Okay. All right. Did you care to react? I think for for the the support, of course we are expected to support the the, the president or the leaders of our of our country. And tama sabi ni sabi ni father na there can be no perfect leader especially in this imperfect time siguro um, but i think uh, support is a different matter but opinions or comments by 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 the people or the citizens or netizens for that matter cannot be prevented so um, it's just that the this current administration siguro dapat I direct niya yung, yung government or the administration into what it really wants it to be. Okay. Attorney? Okay. Take a moment. Follow up? May follow up ka? Please. Uh, uh, kasi oh. nagugulahan lang. Hindi, hindi, hindi. O sige na, ma'am. Uh, what happens here is that okay, nung, just like I'll give an example, di ba? Mga bata nung araw, pinapalo ng magulang. Ngayon, matitino eh. Diba? Ako nung bata ako, hindi ako pwede magsalita sa pagkainan, mga ganun ba. Ngayon, we have given all the liberties to our children. Yung, op, pag pinalo mo, 
pwede kang kasuhan. Pero what has happened? Diba, what we thought was right, change things na ganyan, na hindi gaya nung araw na disiplinado ang bata. So, ngayon, iniisip natin what, think, what we think is right. Dapat ganito yung presidente, dapat ganito yung ganito, dapat ganito. Okay. Pero ano ba nangyayari? Okay. Dahil lumalala, di ba? Hindi, pero at least nung pinalo tayo, buhay tayo. <laughs> di ba? Eh, yung ngayon, hindi na, tigok na eh. Ayun yung pagkakaiba. Natuto tayo, buhay tayo. At kung napatunayan natin mali tayo doon sa ginawa ng magulang natin, hindi na natin ginawa sa anak natin. Pinagsabihan natin. Kay yes, pa- please. Kay Father po. Rolly Sumuntina po, DWB. Uh, Father, I hope you will not be offended. Uh, tanong ko lang po, ang CBCP, nasa mga po ng mga abispo, alam natin yung pinamumunan ni Sok Villegas. Ay, ni Bishop Villegas, tama po. Archbishop. Archbishop. Eh, kasi po, kung natatandaan natin, nung H Revolution, isa sa sa kasama ng mga dilawan. Hindi ko kaya ang CBCP ngayon ay dilawan? <laughs> hindi po eh. Berde. <laughs> hindi po, hindi po. <laughs> Karamihan doon, berde eh. <laughs> They're seriously speaking, ano? Uh, by allusion, malayo eh. Kasi kung meron man dilawan siguro nung panahon na yun, baka si Cardinal Sin, hindi si Sok. Hindi po, kasi po, nung panahon ni Pinoy, hindi ko umatake si BCP sa gobyerno. Pero ngayon ho, kitang-kita yung pagkatakit. Tira well, lang ko namin. Well, baka hindi, ho si, baka hindi lang si Socrates Villegas ang masyadong vocal. Pero sigurado ko, sa hanay ng mga obispo, merong tumitira kay Pinoy. Kaya kung naalala mo, nung pumunta dito sa Santo Papa, hindi siguro mag, ano, magsusumbong ang Pangulo sa Santo Papa. Kaya kung naalala nyo nun, nung nando doon ang Santo Papa sa Malacanang, eh, walang yato si Pinoy eh. Di ba ang ginawa niya? Sinumbong niya yung mga obispo. Na yung mga obispo doon nakikialam sa kanyang administrasyon. Anong ibig sabihin nun? E pinapakita doon yung mga obispo kahit sino dyan na naupo. Kapag hindi ginawa tama, titirahin talaga ng obispo yan. So hindi, hindi yun natin pwedeng sabihin na dilawan. Ano? Ang ibig po sabihin, hindi ko kami nakarinig ng comment nung panahon ni Pinoy. Eh marami naman kapalpakan ang... Uh... Hindi yun ang sinasabi nga ni, ano, ni Father. <laughs> Siguro ho, hindi mag i si Pinoy ng mga issue kung talagang hindi siya tinatamaan. Ano? Kaya sabi ko nga, nung nando doon sa Malacanang ang Santo Papa, nagsumbong ang Pangulo na tinitira daw siya ng mga obispo. Ngayon, kung hindi nyo narinig, baka yung newspaper ninyo hindi nagsusulat tungkol sa gisa na sabi ng obispo. Pero yung ibang, pa, yung ibang pahayagan, eh kabi-kabila eh, tinitira ang, ano, eh, tinitira ang mga obispo din eh. Okay, teka muna, bago ko makalimutan, happy birthday kay Ol Salazar. Ol, pasok na muna kayo. Andito yung tatlong dalaga. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Andito na rin si Bert Swansing. Ol, oh, di ba? Okay. So, tuloy tayo. Thank you very much for the questions. Tess? Samantalang uh, papalapit si Tess sa mikropono. Yeah, please. yung issue tungkol sa process, constitutional process, which is impeachment. Pero, yung implikasyon ng issue sa taong bayan, yun ang hindi natin natatalakay ng gusto. Like you have given your opinions regarding the impeachment process as a constitutional with political implications. Pero yung moral implications sa mga tao, hindi natalakay. And I feel this is very important from the point of view of the institution of the church, from the point of view of the legal institution and from the point of view of the justice and judiciary institution. Okay, okay. Sorry, Sani, ah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Reactions. So, ano yun? Ano yun? Ano ba nakikita ninyo? Because ito, pinag-uusapan naman tao, and I'm particularly interested in what the millennials are saying or not saying because of what is happening. Nakakaka- nakakakaba. Yes, for the millennials like us, <laughs> Talaga? <laughs> pwede pa, pwede pa, pa, pasado pa, actually included pa. Hindi, um, I think ang process itself, not necessarily going into its, its nature as a political process or a legal process or a constitutional process, it has an effect in different aspects or implications sa lahat ng aspects in the Filipino way of life. not only to the workers, not only for lawyers, not only for, for, for Christians or Muslims or, or any other uh, 
uh, sector sa, sa Pilipinas. Ang, ang mga kabataan, especially right now, they are, they are very loud and active sa social media. Kung titignan mo lang yung mga comments on this, on particular items on impeachment, halimbawa, of course, you have to be very careful kasi merong mga may trolling na nangyayari. Pero, kung titignan mo, the other day, last last Saturday, I was talking to a group of students in, in I Academy sa Makati. More, at least, I think, 100. 100 students. Um, lahat sila may social media account and some of them can talk about various issues and politics is one. Pero hindi pa natin napag-uusapan dito yung the economics aspect. Dito, kung titignan natin yung pang-gobyerno pa lang na aspeto, magkano ba ang ginagastos for, for, for the impeachment process itself? Um, yung previous impeachment, alam natin na may lumabas pang pera after the impeachment process na kinuha sa kaban ng gobyerno and it was revealed. Um, and as to the economic aspects, yung epekto naman sa mga industries ang dollar natin. Magkano ba ngayon yung peso as, as against the, the other currencies? Ang, um, ang mga proyekto na dapat tinututukan na hindi natututukan because all of us are, are focused doon sa prosesong ito. All we are saying here is that it has an implication to not only to, to millennials but all of us. And we have to be very, very observant of what is happening about and this. And we must also consider that uh, foreign direct investments has gone down by 90% uh, as of last count. Do you care to add to the discussion? You, para sa akin, yung impeachment is, uh, ang basic niyan is transparency and accountability of public officials. At nangyayari lang hindi lamang ngayon. Panahon ni Quirino, na uh, mayroong uh, impeachment complaint laban kay Quirino dahil kasali na yung Golden Arenola at uh, yung paggamit ng uh, military laban sa mga kalaban ni Quirino pero hindi nag-succeed yun. Pero pagkatapos nung uh, proceeding na yun ay nanalo si Ramon Magsaysay. Nung panahon ni Marcos, ay may, may impeachment proceeding din si Marcos noong uh, 1985 pero na-dismiss yun after a week na na-file yung uh, impeachment in speech ng National Assembly. Nung panahon ni Pangunong Cory, mayroon ding impeachment na, na nangyari noon pero na-dismiss din ng uh, House of Representatives. Nung panahon ni... Uh, sino pa ba? FBR. Nung FBR ata, wala ata. Parang, wala, wala, wala. Parang uh, si FBR marunong mag-conciliate at mag-mediate at magkaroon ng common uh, agreement. Kaya mm -hmm. wala siyang, <laughs> walang kodita during his time then. So, wow. nung panahon ni IRAP, na, na-impeach si IRAP sa House of Representatives pero nabulyaso yung uh, trial sa Senado. Okay. Pero natuluyan pa rin siya. Matanggal siya. <laughs> Nag-constructive okay. dismissal ata or con constructive, <laughs> okay. uh, constructive resignation ang sabi okay. ng Korte Suprema doon. Alright. So, nung panahon ni Gloria, apat, 2005, 2006. Sino nga yung magaling mag-file taon-taon? <laughs> si, si lawyer yon lawyer, si oh. Attorney Lozano. Magaling, no? Oo, oh, oh, apat na beses. Apat na bisis, 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008. Uh -huh. At uh, after Gloria, nung panahon ni Kwan, na impeachment proceeding din, panahon ni Aquino, di ba? Pero dismiss lahat eh. Okay. At ito ngayon, eh, nasali na yung uh, Chief Justice at yung Ombudsman. Okay. Uh -huh. So, dito, nakita natin na pag Presidente yung ipa-impeach mo, mm -hmm. it's almost next to impossible na magtatagumpay. Mm -hmm. Pero kung Wala iba, pa nagtagumpay. Oh, pero kung yung uh, ipa-impeach mo, katulad ng CJ, uh -huh. madali yon dahil uh, sinonymous daw yung house sa executive pagdating sa katagang gripo. <laughs> Ganun ba uh, yun? <laughs> ewan ko lang kung totoo yun. Pero that's what I heard. Uh -huh. okay. pa parang may reasonable ground to believe na mayroong kuha niyan pa siyan. Okay. Thank you. Father? Well, you, you are asking po about the moral implications, ano? Well, basa sinasabi ni Atty. kanina, uh, two points lang, ano? Number one, in the determination of transparency and accountability, dapat pares na standards ang ginagamit natin. 
Eh, meron tayo dito double standard. Eh. So, yung millennial sa binabanggit natin dito, makukonfuse eh. So, why is this guy being persecuted while the other is not? Eh, halos sa impression sila. Halos mas malala pa nga ginagawa nito ng isa eh. So, doon pa lang, hindi natin dito makita yung objectivity. Which leads me now to the second point. So ngayon, kung halimbawa, yung mga kabataan na nakakakita dito, abay, kapag libo-libo, milyon-milyon ang gumagawa niyan, it becomes right, it becomes a truth. So hindi natin makita yung objective truth again. So that is very dangerous. So y- y- yun lang. Meron yes. isa, lang, isa lang, bago matapos itong forum. Total impeachment, ano? Sa so, dalawang lawyer. Pwede bang impeach si Duterte na yung 13,000 na napatay? Yung, yun ang magiging it, ground. Oh, yun lang, yun lang. Wala na tayong pag-uusapan na iba. Pero oh. saan mo i-file? Ha? Sa house pa rin. Uh-huh. Hindi, I mean, legally. Uh, okay. Titindig ba yun legally? Will it have uh, I mean, a whole water or oh, hawak mo? Okay, okay. On, on that basis, kasi kung titignan natin, what are the what are the grounds for for impeachment? Saan yun mailalagay yung, as you are saying, that the grounds the may extrajudicial killings, for example, or the killings for that matter? So, will it be... Teka muna, andito yung resource person, wala dyan. Uh, will it be within those offenses? mentioned in the Constitution? Will it be a culpable violation of the Constitution? Or will it be constitutive of other high crimes? Or will it be betrayal of public trust? Kung, kung titignan natin dito sa mga sa enumeration, sa enumeration ng mga offenses, pwede mo siya, siguro kung titignan natin yung ganito, pwede mo siya i... Ang ano lang eh, ang ang betrayal of public trust and culpable violation of the Constitution lang eh, stems doon sa, sa oath of office na pinermahan ng isang, isang impeachable officer, especially the President of the Philippines. So, an impeachment process relates to the very oath of, of the impeachable officers. Kung sa pagtake, at sa pagtake mo ng oath mo, you promise to, to comply with the Constitution and other laws within the within the Philippines. So, so if you talk about killings, be it in accordance with, uh, with uh, as defined, for example, kasi ngayon may konsepto na naman na lumalabas lately that there is a definition of extrajudicial killing. Kaya nga, ang sinasabi ng gobyerno, there is no such thing as extrajudicial killing. And sabi nga ng isang officer din, sabi niya, yung extrajudicial killing cannot be uh, happening in the Philippines because there are no constitutional killing as of the moment. So, kung titignan natin, these are ang daming batas na bawal ito, yung ganito. Basic lang yon, Basic lang yon. And kung hindi siya sa, sa culpable violation of the Philippine Constitution, sa betrayal, betrayal of public trust, which can be a catch-all provision, even though titignan natin doon sa sa constitutional commissions na pag-uusap during the, the deliberations of the 1987 constitution, ang betrayal of public trust is, is clear also. Okay. Thank you. Would you care to add? Okay na. All right. Okay na. Uh, maliwanag yun. So, would you have any other questions so far? Wala na? Okay. So, ano po nakikita niyong kinabukasan natin sa Republika ng Pilipinas mula ngayon hanggang sa susunod na taon. Yung sa mga manggagawa, eh, ang tingin ng mga manggagawa, eh, mahirap pa rin ang mga manggagawa. So, walang nangyayari na mga pagbabago na uh, makapag-improve uh, sa buhay ng mga manggagawa. Maliban doon sa, halimbawa, yung uh, free public education. So, marami na ngayon nag-aaral sa UP ang hindi nagbabayad ng tuition. Uh, ano pa? Yung pagtaas ng, uh, ng social security pension. At least, maski yung isang libo ay nakakatulong sa pagbili ng gamot ng ating mga, ating mga elderly. At may isusunod dyan sa pagkatapos ng termino ng ating 
Pangulo. Talaga ikukun yung mga social... Wait, 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 excuse me. May susunod pagkatapos ng Mayroon, mayroon. Sa 2022. Hindi ba pwedeng San mas Libo. maaga na? <laughs> yun, yun ang uh, yun yung batas eh. No? Hindi, okay. hindi naman. Hindi na sa batas sa, okay. sa desisyon ng Social Security Commission. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so, at least nakala- So, dal- yung dalawang libo, mapufulfill yung is- kalahati na isang libo ay sa twen- paglabas ni Duterte sa pagkapangulo sa 2022. So, palagay ko yung mga ganong programa ay nakakatulong yon Sana yung gobyerno ay... Instead na papatayin yung mga biktima, ay tulungan na ma-rehabilitate. At yung uh, mga tao sana, yung mga social welfare program ng gobyerno, ay ipapatupad. At ang makalaking tulong ay yung isyo ng kontraktualisasyon. Na malaki pa rin ang problema ng mga manggagawa. Lalong-lalo na yung mga bagong graduate. Instead na inaasahan sila ng mga magulang nila, after or before the end of six months ng kanilang trabaho, tanggal na sila. So, hindi rin nakakatulong. Di ba? Kung uh, yung ating uh, trabaho sana sa Pilipinas ay hindi prekaryos at sana ay permanente at may kasiguruhan, malaking tulong yan sa mamamayang Pilipino at palagay ko ay magsisimula yung pag-asa ng mga manggagawa. Attorney? Sa maraming issues na this country is being confronted with, particularly on the on the impeachment process and and to the investigations of corrupt practice, practices dito sa ating bansa, as to the future, there can be uncertainty siguro. Pero what we can probably do right now is to be watchful and observant if we can take part in the in the spreading of the information for for the Filipinos to come up with with an opinion or a, 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 an opinion that is based on on judgment of what is happening currently and with this political processes that are, that are happening i just hope and pray that we continue to respect the ins- existing institutions respect the rule of law in this country and in this way we can probably et- achieve something if not really justice, something equivalent to or near the justice that we are trying to have in this country. Thank you. Father, kay puwanta daw kay Santiguar. O ano? <laughs> De, yung Santiguar, eh, ano yun, tinatawas sa Bicol. Yun ang term doon. Eh. So, anong kailangan natin? What do you see in the near future? Change is coming. Serious ako ha? tumatawa nga ako eh. Well, seriously speaking, ano, uh, meron akong nabasang isang libro. Ang uh, pamagat ng libro niya ay ano, ano, A Man's Search for Meaning. Ito ay, ito ay sinulat ni Victor Frankl. Alam naman natin siguro kung sino siya. Psychiatrist, imprisoned during the Nazi occupation. Uh, he was in Auschwitz. Pero maganda yung tinanong niya doon. Ano? Habang ino-observe niya yung mga tao, may tanong siya sa sarili niya, ano ba na-accomplish ng mga taong to? Ano? Right at that very moment, yun ang tanong niya. Anong accomplishment meron yung mga taong to? And then it dawned on him, there is only one accomplishment for all those people inside the camp. Sabi niya, that they were able to survive. That they were able to overcome their own sufferings. Yun lang ang kanilang kumbaga ay accomplishment right at that very moment. So the Filipinos are suffering, maybe not all of us. Majority of the Filipinos are actually poor. But then I think, you know, the last to die should be hope. So we continue to hope. Even, even with the president that we have right now, let's still have hope that something good may come out of it. So hindi po natin kumbaga tinutulig sa ang pangulo dahil ah, wala siyang ginagawang tama. Natutulig sa lang naman ang pangulo dahil meron din siyang nagagawang hindi tama. At dapat niyang aminin 'yon. Ngayon kung halimbawa ang pangulo ay hindi aamin na meron siyang nagagawang mali. At ang gagawin niya ngayon ay bobweltahan niya yung kanyang mga kritiko. Eh baka naman yung pangulong to hindi siya magtagal, di ba? So, kasi ang tao marunong din kumilatis kung ano yung totoo at kung ano yung tama. So, wag nating tawaran ang kumbaga karunungan din ng bawat isa. 
So, I'll repeat, ano, the last to die is hope. So, we continue to hope so that there ko, will be a better Philippines. Dagdag ko lang sa dali, ano ba yung hard and fast rule ng Catholic Church on sanctuaries? Because the beautiful lady from Malacanang said, the church should go easy on providing asylum, if you may, or protection to policemen who may be wrong policemen or those who are you know, facing charges? So number one, there is really no clear policy about offering sanctuary. So I, I, I ask the church's authorities about that during our meeting. Wala ditong clear-cut policy you know, kung paano magpo-provide ng sanctuary sa mga katulad ng binabanggit ninyo. Pangalawa, kung meron kasing lumalapit sa iyo, hindi mo naman pwedeng talikuran na lang yan. Ano? So the church is an institution that actually embraces everybody. Ano? And, and I think that that kind, of, that kind of thinking is not a practice that was just invented by the church. It was actually a practice showed to us by Christ himself. And he embraced even the sinners. So we do not judge these people. Pangatlo, Nandun doon na, no, na lumapit na sa'yo, maaring nga na yung rogue cup, maaring nga na yung meron din sariling motive. Pero maganda doon sa sinabi ni Socrates Villegas sa kanyang statement, hindi mo naman tatanggapin hook, line, and sinker yung sasabihin nito. Eh. Ang sabi ni Socrates Villegas doon, we are even going to have independent lawyers to look into the matter. So hindi expert yung pare, hindi expert yung obispo para ma-determine mo kung ano yung legal legalities ng mga bagay na ginagawa nitong uh, police na to. Yung independent lawyers, these are lawyers who are not connected with any party, affiliated with any politician. Yun ang sinasabi doon ni Sok. So, we, we do not claim that we have the expertise ano, to really deal in, in, in the, uh, to really deal with this matter. But then again, with the help of some other people who belong to some other independent institutions, baka meron magawang simbahan. Ulitin ko lang, ano, Hindi mo pwedeng talikuran na lang yan eh. So we listen to them. We give them our ear. Uh, these are people who we presume are in distress. Mm. So that the church is there to listen to them. Yun ang munang-unang-unang step na ginagawa ng simbahan. Listen to them. As to the determ determination of the veracity of their claims, hindi lang simbahan ang magdidetermine nun. Okay. Pati na rin yung ibang mga tao na binanggit ko, magdidetermine nun. Baka psychologist kasama din dyan. Mga abogado na katulad ng mga guests natin kasama din dyan. Okay. Very well. Sky, papaalam na tayo. Oo nga eh. Very, ano yung, very deep ang discussion natin ngayon. Kasi, sabi nga ni Father, hindi, hindi timing, pero very timely naman na pinag-usapan natin tong discussion ngayon. Kasi it's also time for the Filipinos to really know more about it. Of course. And to, Sabi nga natin sa social media, we need to discuss it more kasi we also need people to learn more about what is the executive order number 43 and the impeachment efforts ng ating presidente. So, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat sa lahat ng nandito sa ating mga guests. Thank you so much, Father Jerome. Thank you po, Attorney. At least, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Actually, uh, I just recalled, somebody invited me to watch a play called Le Miserab some time ago. Did you so, watch it? Sabi ko, hindi <laughs> na ako manunood. Miserable na ang buhay ko. So, might as well uh, do away with it. However, marami tayong mga kasama rito na may kamag-anak sa Estados Unidos o sa Singapore I would like you to request them to buy a book so you will understand. Uh, the book is entitled The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. This book contains essays of 27 psychiatrists who looked into the kind of thinking Mr. Trump has and why was he described as a danger to humanity. And there you will learn probably of some parallelisms or similarities in some other famous people. I'm not saying, some other. Oh, I'm not saying the President of the Philippines. I'm saying some other people. So mga kaibigan, salamat po sa ating mga kasama. Happy birthday kay Ol Salazar, kaklase namin sa Pisa Mora. 
elementary school, mga kaklase, yung inyong student ID. Huwag nyo kalilimutan. So maraming salamat po. Magandang araw. Hanggang sa susunod edisyon. Let's pray for God's blessings. And please remember Eric San Juan in your prayers. He also was a moderator for uh, Friday Balita and Serembrandt. He passed away uh, last night or yesterday afternoon. By the way, uh, yesterday I lost three friends. One of them is Ian Pangalanan, uh, who is a lawyer, uh, an associate of good friend Trixie Angeles Cruz. No? And then I also lost a friend from college by the name of Congresswoman Dina Abad. So please remember them in your prayers. Thank you.